Everyone thinks rap legend Snoop Dogg is a great guy, but is it all an illusion? I was like, my Snoop! I was at the forefront of the most violent record label in the world. Snoop Dogg and Tupac lived under the control of rap's most violent kingpin, Suge Knight. Suge demanded loyalty. I had to step out of that situation. Shapur was shot four times in a car driven by Suge Knight. The type of relationship you only get that once in a lifetime. I have actual remorse. You were the only person connected up to Suge Knight. The last time I saw him, he was holding on to his last breath. I had got off the radio station with Angie Martinez. She asked me on the air, how do you feel about Puffy and Biggie? And I said what I felt. They're my homeboys, I love them. When I got back to the hotel, it was a whole nother atmosphere. So when we got on the plane to go back to LA the next day, Suge didn't let none of my security ride with me. I had to ride with him, his homies, and Pac. I'm like, what's up, Pac? And they do me like this. So I walked to the back of the plane, give me a blanket, Grab me a knife and a fork. The blanket over my nose right here. The ride like this the whole flight. Snoop was desperate to feel safe, but he'd been trapped in a life of violence and fear for years. At 12 years old, you join a gang. If you're a young black guy growing up at that time, drugs and gangs were as much a part of your life as stoplights and street signs. Were you ever afraid? I was always scared. A lot of times I got shot at, I had a gun in my possession and could have shot back, but I was too scared because I was so concerned with my life. It got to a point to where my mother kicked me out because she felt like I was bringing too much drama to her house. I had just turned 17. Jesus, and what do you do? It's not like you got somewhere to go. Where did you go? When Snoop met hip hop CEO Suge Knight, he thought he'd finally found a way out. He was so honest, so real, so true, and so passionate about his orders, giving us direction, coaching us. And when Snoop bonded with rapper Tupac, it seemed like he'd found the family he always wanted. Fell in love with that Me and him started hanging out, building a brotherhood with him. We represent both sides of the gang, the calm one and the relentless one. So when actually I spoke to Suge and was like, we need to get him with us because he will make us better. And he gonna push me. We need his spirit here. But as Snoop and Tupac grew closer, there was one person who tried to warn them about Shug. When we first met, I was a drug dealer. Jade is my heart. He would be my friend for my whole life. As I was coming out of the life, he was going more into the life. I really felt like I was powerless. Shug was not someone to be toyed with. He ruled by fear and intimidation. There were stories of people being pistol whipped, being roughed up, people being slapped around. This is like some Godfather type stuff. With Suge and Tupac on his side, Snoop thought he was untouchable until the violence caught up with him. You got into hip hop like, okay, now I can leave some of this behind. And I came right with me. Snoop and his bodyguard, and he were driving down the street in his Jeep at this guy was trying to say something to them. He had a gun and he was going for it. And my bodyguard reacted. Snoop's bodyguard shot and killed Philip Baldemary. Now Snoop had to make a choice about the kind of person he really wanted to be. I was traumatic and didn't know what to do. I want to go turn myself in and let them know what happened. Snoop turns himself in for first degree murder. Immediately, Shug gets him released on a million dollar bond, 10 p.m. house arrest. My heart was, was beating every day. And me and Pac got into it because he wanted me to stay gangster. And I was like, cuz, I got a baby on the way. I have a lot to live for. Somebody's life was lost. This is a real situation. I don't feel like y'all feel. I have actual remorse. I feel bad. I don't want to let his gangster life no more. We, the jury in a bubble title action, find a defendant not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. Tupac and Shug wanted him to stay loyal, but Snoop was desperate for peace. There was a lot of tension between East Coast and West Coast rappers. Pac was adamant about the beef that he had between Biggie and him. That it was serious. There's no dream of making an album with Biggie and Puffy. And then in the middle of all that, you and I have this big interview. He said, so how do you feel about Puffy and Biggie? I said, I'm cool with him. I want to do some music with him. I want to work with him. Tupac took it as if I wasn't down with him no more. Death Row looked at me as like a traitor. You had sided with the enemy. Snoop had no idea that the tense plane ride home would be the last time he'd see Tupac alive. My didn't say nothing to me the whole ride. And that's a five hour flight on a private plane. I get off the plane, I'm like, cuz, you going to Vegas? He do me like this. Went Wait, his way and he went my way. Next time I get a call, turn on the news, turn on the news, guys. We see yellow tape, Shug BMW. Tupac Shakur was shot four times in a drive-by shooting. 
He's in very critical condition and he's requiring intensive care. I drove down there to the hospital because I wanted to see my but I'm thinking that he was going to make it. It's Pac. He'd been shot before. Fine. I see him in the bed, laid up, no words, no conversation. I was whispering to him, telling him I loved him and to hold on and he was going to be okay. And I went to the bathroom, I fainted, I threw up, I was gone because me and my homie wasn't straight. I'm not even going to be able to apologize to him or even just to tell him, I feel you, I'm, I'm wrong, how can we fix this? Rap star Tupac Shakur died last night after a brief life in a rough business. He was 25. After losing Tupac, Snoop knew he had to break free of the violence, even if it put him in danger. I had to step out of that situation. Once you become a grown man and you realize that your words have power and you have power, then you have to pull back. Death Row was more negative than positive. And as Snoop took a stand against Shug, he had no idea that someone else from his past was watching. You and I have been around for a long time, right. and along the way, I've had a bit of a complicated relationship with right. you during those very complicated times. You were the only person that came out and stood up to Suge Knight and spoke out. Well, I've become the peacekeeper. The fact that you were like, I'm not having it. You don't even yeah, know right. what that did for me. And we started building bridges. By choosing love over fear, Snoop honored Tupac's legacy and built the belonging he'd always wanted. Pac was taught how to love at a very early age. And through his music, he shared the love with all of us. My life is not based off of me being a gangbanger. It's based off of me being positive, finding ways to help others. You start to educate. You start to teach the little homies on how to do better and not to do what you did. You coach a football team. You that you coach. Football league. He really believes in giving them a sense of identity. The key to this thing is bringing people together. Project more of a positive energy over negativity. Always keeping peace and love at the forefront of everything. <laughs>